here at the Lehigh Valley Hospital Schuylkill, uh, your community partner. Uh, and let me tell you, uh, the show is that we're doing in the sponsorship for Lehigh Valley uh, Health Network is bringing a lot of valuable information, health information for you. Uh, take advantage of it. Now, they have a website. There's a lot of great information on that website. Uh, this show, as you know, is seen uh, on YouTube, Facebook, you, you name it, we're all over the place and it's to bring you information. We have an interesting show for you today um, and um, the president, Bill Reppy, is here. He'll explain some of the things that are happening and also uh, you're going to be very impressed. Uh, I remember uh, I tell this story and I want to repeat for you to hear it is the fact that many people have come up to my wife and I when they see us and this one lady came running with her husband and, and couldn't thank Lehigh Valley Hospital for having shows like this because one of the shows we did saved her husband's life. And so uh, those are the kind of things, Bill, that That's just important. make you feel good, you yes. know. Uh, so Bill Reppy is the president, the chief man, star, you know, you name it, he's the guy. <laughs> um, we have a lot of fun, Bill, uh, but yet you get, everybody works hard and they're, and they're passionate to what they're doing. So you, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, the, the, the hospital. Uh, what's new and exciting? I know we're going to talk about mammo uh, the 3D mammogram. Right. And uh, I'm very excited about learning about that. What's happening here? So a lot of great things. We continue to grow and evolve, Sam. Uh, you know, that's part of our mission to make sure that we can provide the services as close to home as possible for our patients. So in addition to the 3D mammogram, which we'll talk about, the, a second unit that is, we already had one of those. So we've added a second unit. Uh, we're putting a brand new MRI in, so state-of-the-art MRI. That'll open in April. Uh, we are opening a practice in Orgsburg, uh, so we're bringing in Dr. Cotter. Dr. Cotter comes from us from the Reading area. She's a uh, John Hopkins trained physician. Uh, she's a lecturer with John Hopkins and Penn State University, so really a, a top-notch physician to uh, improve our access in the southern end of Schuylkill County. We do not have a practice there today, so we think that's very important to make sure that we can uh, deliver that care close to home. So she starts next month, so she starts in March. So we're very excited about that. Additionally, one of the things we're really excited about is our residency program. So for the first time in our 125 year history, we are gonna be a graduate medical education facility here in Pottsville. So we, our residency program starts in July and we will be accepting four residents and we really had an overwhelming response. Uh, so we started with 900 applications for four positions. Uh, we whittled, whittled that down to about 200 and actually ended up interviewing 87 candidates for four positions. So, uh, you know, again, I think when, you're, we, when you become a teaching hospital, it sets you apart from the pack. Yes. Because you really have to be on your game, because uh, we're teaching our next generation of doctors. Mm -hmm. And so we're very excited about that starting up. And again, our residents start in July. It's a three-year program. So uh, over the three years, we'll have 12 residents learning to be our future doctors here in Schuylkill County. So let me ask you a question. I'm talking to Bill Peckman uh, prior to the, our taping here, and we're talking about recruitment, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, and I know when I'm interviewing some of the doctors on set in Hazleton, uh, I asked them why did they decide to come to Lehigh Valley or work with Lehigh Valley Network. So um, what do you think, you know, um, if you're out there and, and someone says, Bill, what are you doing? Well, I'm president, you know, so and I'm a doctor. I'm looking to, you know, I'm looking to move. What would you say to me to attract me to uh, either Schuylkill or, you know, you have Hazleton, Carbon, uh, for that matter, the network? What, right, do, you, what do you tell them? Well, actually, you know, we're, we have world-class medicine. We have uh, well over 350 residents, so we are a very large teaching facility. But beyond that, you know, a lot of companies say we're family, but we really are family, particularly, you know, as you get into our smaller communities. You know, a lot of our colleagues are here 40, 50 years working. Um, and, you know, the cost of living is so different here than compared to the bigger cities. But one of the advantages, I believe, uh, living in this region is our access to big cities. So you can live rurally, relatively low cost of living, relatively good crime rate, very good public school. Thank God for that. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> and get to the city at any given day. You know, we're, actually, if you put a pin in Schuylkill County, we're within three hours of 25% of the population of the United States. I know, yeah. So, you know, you can get to New York City in a day, you can get to Baltimore in a day, you can go to Philadelphia in a day, and, and so you can get that city life in episodes instead of having to live it every day, and, and, and the trauma that goes along with living in a city. 
Well, you're looking at uh, when I and, and precisely what you're saying is what most of the uh, professionals, the PAs or the doctors will tell me why did they decide and of course coming to uh, meeting the people of Lehigh Valley. When you look at leadership, and we touched on leadership before, okay, uh, Brian Nestor, okay, um, uh, if, uh, correct, uh, and Brian was on the show with um, uh, my friend Fletcher, and we talked about, you know, uh, Lehigh Valley uh, Health Network and how great it is. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a guy that's dedicated in the leadership, and you can see how that's going through the entire absolutely. system. Wouldn't absolutely. you think so? No, absolutely. I mean, you talked to Dr. Nestor, he is a passionate, passionate man about delivering quality health care for, yeah. our, for our communities. And, it, and I feel it's palpable when he speaks. And, you know, he, he speaks, you know, from his heart. And again, he's a local guy. He grew up in Reading. So, you know, he's a local guy and he, his pa he brings his passion. And that really permeates our, permeates our organization. You know, all of us want to make sure that we're delivering the best possible care to our patients. And, you know, we're working hard at delivering that at a value. So lower cost delivery of health care. And to help the hospital out, my friends, uh, when you go to the hospital, they send you a, a survey. Uh, that survey is extremely important that you fill it out, okay? And, and it's reason, I, I would think so, yeah. because it tells a story to them as to what direction, you know, are we slacking this department, do we need there? And, and I think that's important information for you, isn't it, Bill? Oh, absolutely. That, that feedback is critically important. And, and honestly, all of our presidents, uh, if, if we have some dissatisfied patients, we actually call them ourselves, because yeah. I want to hear from them, you know? And, you know, a lot of times you hear from them, well, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. That's not the point of the survey. The, yeah. the point of the survey is help us get better at what we do. You know, we'd all like to think we're perfect, but we're not. We're human beings, yeah. and we will stumble and fall down once in a while. Yeah. It's how we recover from that stumbling that makes us different here at Lehigh Valley. Some of the complaints are, well, yeah, complaints are emergency rooms. Yes. And I think some people, you know, my wife being a registered nurse understands what triage right. is all about. Right. And sometimes a person will go to emergency room and they're waiting there and they're waiting there, not realizing what is happening. Explain right. a little bit what happens in an emergency room. Sure, so as you come in our front door, you're triaged by a nurse. Yeah. And, and tell them what triage is. So that's an evaluation to see what level your illness is. So obviously if you're walking in with chest pain, that's critical. You're gonna, you know, if you're walking in with a twist ankle, important, yeah. but not as critical as, a, as somebody that's having a heart attack. Yeah. And so we've set a priority, and the most critical patients obviously have to be treated first. So if we believe it's life-threatening, you go to the top of the line, even if you came in later than the person in front of you. Right. That, that's just the nature of being in an emergency room. But one of the things Lehigh Valley has done, and I think pretty successfully, is we've opened up other access points where if it's not critical, a twisted ankle, yeah. you know, you, whatever, you can go to an express care. We have an express care here in Pottsville that just is, is very busy, but it's also faster than an emergency room because if you're at the express care, you get in in the order you came in the door. In the emergency room, if you come in and three ambulances pull up behind you, the ambulances come in first. Yeah. You know, we've got to take care of the most critical people. And you know, what surprises people here in our little hospital here in Pottsville, we get about 22 ambulances a day that come to our door. Wow. So wow. obviously they take priority. Sure. And, and, and so that's, that's important to understand that the most critical have to go to the front of the line. And, and you know what, I, I say God bless those receptionists because you know, they, they, they get hammered. They do. I mean, and, and it's not their fault, it's right. just that they're, they're doing their job. Right. Uh, and to maintain the cool, uh, and when someone scream at you, you know, you gotta hand it to them. No, absolutely. <clears throat> and one of the things we're trying to work on is, you know, really effective communication helps with that situation. So if, if you're waiting, and you don't know why you're waiting, yeah. you're probably getting frustrated with us. Yeah. Now, if we come out and say, you know, sorry, Sam, that you're waiting a little bit longer, but we just had three ambulances co -up, come up, you know, yeah. people are having a heart attack or, yeah. you know, respiratory trouble, yeah. doesn't make the wait any better necessarily, but at least you understand yes. why you're waiting. And so, I think then people could be ambassador with right, that. Right, absolutely. Uh, we're going to come back to Bill, but right now I'm going to take a break, and I want you to know that, you know, we're seeing my friends here on Comcast, uh, and Channel 190, uh, every day, 7 to 11. 24 at SE, SSP TV, Channel 13, and 513, our HD channel. And of course, in Wilkesbury, on the Wilkesbury system every Saturday and Sunday evening. Uh, YouTube channel, uh, been, been hit. And remember, go to their website to gain a lot of information on healthcare. Uh, we're going to come back. We're going to view um, uh, Laura Fulmer. 
and you're going to be excited about what she has to say about the 3D mammography, and then we'll end the show with uh, President Bill Reppy. Folks, we're here at Schuylkill, the Lehigh Valley Hospital Schuylkill, uh, your community partner show, uh, bringing you a lot of very important information uh, to make your health the best it can be, and there's no other place than the Lehigh Valley Network. Now, uh, as President uh, Bill Weppy was talking about, one of the things we talked about was mammogram. And, uh, you know, there's one thing you don't want to hear, is that, uh, is when you, you know, you don't want to hear, well, it's too late. You're, you're, you're fourth stage cancer, breast cancer. And you think to yourself, well, geez, you know, what could I have done to prevent this? And that's what we're all about, my friends, is to prevent uh, things like this happening. I'm here with Laura Fulmer, who is the mammography technologist, right? Correct, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's with the advances we have today, and we're going to talk about this wonderful machine, which is, you know, we talk about technology. It's a shame that some people, um, women, don't take advantage of what they should take advantage of, and especially when we have the technology and, and the uh, availability of saving so many lives. So first of all, tell me about you, Laura. Okay, my name is Laura Fulmer. I've been here at the Lehigh Valley area in Schuylkill my 36 years, so I've been doing mammograms a long time. I've so you know what you're doing? <laughs> Most days, <laughs> yes. 36 years? Yes. Congratulations, mm -hmm. that's Thank fantastic. You. Thank you. And your background, so you've been here? You. I've been here a long time. I'm regularly an uh, x-ray technologist, and then when they started the mammography field, they were looking for technologists to do that. I volunteered and took my boards and have been doing it ever since. Now, I, I really enjoy uh, talking to people who've been in the field for so many years, particularly in the health field. Uh, I know what's happening in technology with cameras because we see so many changes. So, 36 years, you said? 36 years, my friend, she's been in this business. Now, tell me, uh, Laura, what you've seen, okay, when you first started, okay, take me through that. Well, when I first started, we did what was called film screen. We used to use little cassettes. We'd stick into the machine and we would take pictures of it. We used to have to develop them and the patient would have to wait. And back then, we thought they were amazing, the pictures. But today, when you look at the 3D, how much more tissue you can see, how much more the skin line, it's just amazing that we even found anything back then. Technology has really come a long way. And it's ex exciting, isn't it? Oh, extremely exciting. So from what happened then, what was the first, the film? And then they moved into what, x-rays? Then they, then they just did regular 2D, okay. what they called. That was just where it just took a picture straight on and a picture from the side. Now, the, to understand why the 3D is so important, you have to understand a little bit about breast anatomy. Every woman has ducts and glands in her breasts. Whether you use them or not for nursing a baby, they're there. The best way to think about it is like bunches of grapes. They're in your breasts. Younger women have denser breasts. They have more grapes, so to speak. Older women, they don't have as many. That's why they say it's harder for younger women to see on the 2D. If there's a little tiny thing between one of those grapes, on a 2D you may not see it. But on a 3D, what's happening is, instead of just taking the picture straight down, where one of those grapes may obscure it, this is going to swing, and it's going to take 15 pictures from different angles. That way you can see underneath that grape. You can see, uh, actually, they're glands, but you can see underneath it. Um, that way then you can see where it is. Also with calcifications, when we take the 2D, it's just taking one flat picture. You can't quite tell where that is. By doing the 3D, you can tell exactly what level of the breast that is in. What's the, the normal average age? that they should start getting mammograms. Okay, we recommend 40, and so do many of the other medical professions, starting at age 40 for your baseline, after that yearly. The importance is you want us to find something in your breast, if it's gonna be there, before you feel it. Yeah. By coming yearly, we have a better chance of finding that for you, and you have a better chance if there is something in your breast. Okay, now of course, if, you had a, if your family has a history of breast cancer, what's your instruction there? That depends on your insurance. Unfortunately, a lot of things are controlled by insurance. Most insurances, what they do, if your mom, a first degree relative, your mother or your sister or your daughter had breast cancer, they recommend you get your first screening 10 years before the age they developed it. I see. How important does that fall into the factor of a woman 
uh, with either BR1 or BR2. It does help somewhat, but most breast cancers, 80% of them, go to have women who have no risk factors at all. If you have a higher BRCA, it's more in your genes, your doctor may prescribe you go for an MRI or something to supplement the MAMO. But most women who develop breast cancer have no risk factors at all. Okay. Well, that's, that's the thing. So what the technology we have today, now when a person go for the first mammogram, do they get the 3D? They do, yes. We, that, we give everyone a 3D. Okay, so the two Ds, you're not giving two Ds? No. Okay. Um, some women feel, well, you know, they, they, they examine themselves, okay, and you do recommend women should examine themselves, right? Correct, yes. And there's certain proper ways of examining yourself, to feeling any kind of lumps, etc. Um, when you, um, a person comes and they have a 3D and, and they see something, okay, what, what happens then? Well, usually they come in for a screening mammogram, which means we take the four pictures and they go. A radiologist reads them. If there's something that shows up on that mammogram, we do what we call a callback mammogram. Now what that is, the doctor's office would schedule them and they would come in and we do detailed areas of where the radiologist saw something. Some of those extra images might include smaller spot compressions, it might include an ultrasound. When you're doing a whole entire breast, you may not see real deep inside one area. When we put a smaller compressor on, what that does is that pushes all that other tissue out of the way and then you see a very clear, crisp picture of where the, the controversial area is. That way they can see the borders clearer, they can see much more information. That's a callback from a screening. Okay, so Laura, I talked about, you know, those people who are... Now, first of all, you're looking at the biggest baby walking the face of the earth. I mean, I <laughs> hate to go to any... Mm -hmm. I get a test, my blood pressure goes, I'm, I'm a big baby. However, mm -hmm. I still have to go for my yearly exams. I have to do the whole blood work and whole thing. And, uh, and I'm saying, uh, I don't want to go. I'm afraid they're going to mm -hmm. find something. My wife's a registered nurse, and she says... Doesn't that sound stupid? You're afraid you're going to find something. You're going to find something. Find it now before something happens. Tell them what, what happens then. Panic shouldn't set in, okay? Um, you know, a person finds something. What do you recommend then? All right, at that point, what happens is the patient would have a biopsy okay. usually. And they find something. And they find something. Okay. The biopsy itself will tell if it's cancer or benign. We cannot tell that just by looking at it. You mean there's something, for, with your trained eye, I mean, do you have a suspicion sometimes? I mean, well, you won't, certainly won't tell the patient that, but you have a suspicion, you know, that it could be with the experience, you know, some doctors see, well, I know it's benign, but I'm not going to say that until we find out. Is that the way? It, that is correct. When we do a screening mammogram or even the callback ones, we can tell with some certainty whether we feel it's benign or cancer. But again, you can never be 100% sure with any pathology till it comes out and be tested. And that's why it's so very important mm -hmm. that you get the mammogram and get it done fast, okay? Correct. Because what's this, the, the rate of, 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 survival, of survival with, with well, breast Well, if, if we catch it in the earliest stages, you're gonna live 20, 30 years. You're probably gonna die of something else other than yeah. breast cancer. So that's the first or second stage? Correct, okay. yes. All right, so person, um, would a person know if they have if they if they have not been going to get mammograms, which they should, would they know if by feeling if there's a lump or they, sometimes they don't even feel it and sometimes they can be in third or fourth stage. Is that correct? That is correct. Some women can feel lumps, some cannot. So that's why it's important to come yearly. Whether you feel something or not, okay. we're going to see it quicker. Some women, uh, you know, um, feel that, that, that does it hurt or is it something, I mean, is it, it's uncomfortable for a little bit? A couple of seconds. Uh, Actually, whenever I do a woman for the first mammogram, nine times out of ten, they're coming back and they're saying, oh my gosh, I'm scared, I'm scared. Yeah. And I say to them, I would say 95% of women after their first mammogram say, oh my goodness, that wasn't as bad as I thought. Okay. And that's what I found, yes. okay, when I went mm -hmm. for my colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. It took me five, six years. I went, it was a piece of cake, yes. okay? It was like nothing to it. My friends, women particularly, uh, there is no reason why you should not, why, no reason at all why you should not, if you're 40 years old, go and get a mammogram. Now, let's talk about men. Okay. Some men have breast cancer. They okay? do. Now, mm -hmm. where, now, should men come in? Oh. Not for routine screenings because it is so rare in a man. 
the when, men we do have lumps. They use that's why they go to their doctors. They even have even a lump in their breast, or they're having breast pain. Then we will do a mammogram on them. It does happen about one percent of the population that a male will get breast cancer, but it doesn't. It's not cost effective or even safe for the man to be okay. radiated that often. I just wanted to cover about that. So mm -hmm. there are there are. I, I hear. What are the current screening guidelines for women? That is forty years old okay. every year. Every year. 40 years. Now, if you have a history mm -hmm. of breast cancer, and let's say uh, they were 42 when they have it, they recommend coming in when you're 32. Correct. You're looking at 10 years before that happened. But you have to make sure your, your insurance will cover it. Talk with your doctor about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's another story, isn't it? Yes. Now, for women 40 and above, um, you don't need a script. You can just schedule an appointment through. Okay, I'm, we're going to put a phone number up here that I have on the sheet here. Okay, so if someone's interested in, in getting a 3D mammogram uh, here, they could call this number. And do they have to? Do they need their um, the general doctor, uh, their doctor, to get a prescription? No. They could just come in for for a, a screening mammogram. You need no script. Okay. No script. Yeah. And most insurances cover a screening mammogram for yeah. every woman, so it's, it's like a freebie. Yeah, you would think that they'd want, want to have that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so the people out there who are hesitant, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the women like out there who are hesitant, like me, <clears throat> who is always hesitant, <clears throat> what do you have to say to them? Oh, please come. I, I have seen women that had cancer. We did, took care of them, and they're still coming back year after year. I build relationships with them. and. It's a curable cancer, yeah. so please get it done. You love what you're doing. I you? certainly do. 36 years this young woman has been here uh, helping you out, and, and through the help of, of a, a, a health agency like Lehigh Valley Network that just goes, I mean, they keep raising the bar every day in terms of giving you the best of health. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about Lehigh Valley Hospital, you know, and what they have been able to contribute. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, and the staff, the doctors, etc., and meeting people like you who are dedicated to what you're doing, I think that's a tribute to, uh, to the area. Thank you so much. I appreciate well, that. I wish you the best. Okay? Thank you. And, and remember, as Laura said, my friends, please go and get your mammograms. This machine here can save your life. I uh, will take a break. We'll come back right after the break. community partner, Lehigh Valley Hospital, Schuylkill, and the entire Lehigh Valley Health Network doing so much for Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. I'm here with uh, President Bill Reppy of the Schuylkill Hospital here and also the Vice President of the Northwest Region. Um, before we, when we opened the show, we talked about the emergency rooms. Some, sometimes people use the emergency room as uh, a, a regular doctor's office, as a visit, okay? Good or bad? Uh, well, we'd encourage them not to do that. I mean, obviously, if they have another choice, certainly we want to treat the patient, but we'd encourage them to use our express care, as we talked about a little bit earlier. And also, we have a, you know, a broad variety of doctors in our community that have access. So they can make an appointment and see a family doctor uh, in, in any of our practices if it's not an emergency. Now, of course, if it's an emergency, we understand. come to the ER. Okay. Absolutely. And, 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 and that backs up. You know, I mean, the yes. point is they should use express things or go to their family doctors. All right, so we have this terrible, terrible thing called COVID. All yes, right? we do. Uh, it's like a nightmare, all right? <laughs> uh, what's been happening? So we're, f we're finally seeing a decrease in the number of people hospitalized with COVID. I'm happy to say that this week we're running around 10 a day, and, you know, we were as high as in the 30s, so that's, that's a, certainly a good sign. And the, the variant seems to be waning, the Omicron variant. As we expected, there's subvariants. So there's a, there's a variant called the BA2 variant, a subvariant of Omicron that um, the early indication is it spreads rapidly, but even less sick than Omicron. So if you remember when Omicron came out, they said you weren't, most people wouldn't get sick from it. This seems to be the same trend. That's good news if, it's, if that, in fact, tr pr proves out. But I suspect there'll be more variants later. It, we're we're going to be living with this for a long time, I believe. Yeah. The vaccination. Okay, uh, I know uh, I had my two vaccines plus the booster shot. And let me tell you something, I feel bad because I had Medora, okay, and I had the bo booster. 
I was I, nothing happened. I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, I feel like, I, you know, and people say I, I got a little sick. I mean, not critical, but I, I feel, you know, but you're still encouraging it, right? Absolutely, we still run a vaccine clinic here. Uh, we, we're down to one day a week now because the demand has decreased. But we have a clinic here every Wednesday. We offer all three vaccines: Johnson and Johnson, Pfizer, and Moderna. We're offering first shots, second shots, booster shots, and soon there's going to be a push in the population that can get a fourth shot. Wow. So and we so we continue to offer that at, at every every Wednesday. And you know, my friends, it works. It does. I mean, so and some people say, "Well, I got the shot, but I got the COVID." Yeah, but I guess not as bad. Not, right? not as sick. Most yeah. people that had the vaccine did not end up in the hospital when they got COVID. Yeah. Now some still did, but they still didn't end up on a ventilator, and they all went home. Well, that's interesting, uh, Bill. I uh, opened the show when I talked about how people come up to me and they. Um, they thank us for having these shows. And of course, these shows are sponsored, my friends, by Lehigh Valley Health Network. Uh, and that's why they're your community partner. But, um, you know, a, a big thank you to all of you, okay, for providing this information to the general public. Because when that lady came up to me, and I have a lot of them, okay, uh -huh. my husband went for a colostomy. He saw you talking on it, and he figured if Sam LaSan could do it, and he's a big baby, which I am, <laughs> I could do it. Uh, but when she said, and she had tears in her eyes, Bill. I believe it. And she yeah. said, yeah. You saved my husband's life, Sammy. Yeah. I said, no, I didn't. I said, the fact that we brought that information Absolutely. to you, okay, is interesting. So uh, uh, keep the good work going, all right? Uh, you, you're doing a fabulous well, job. Thank you, know. thank you. I appreciate you allowing us this opportunity okay. to get the word out to our community. All right, my friends. Uh, Remember, we're on 24-7, SSP TV, all our health shows are there. Also on the Lehigh Valley uh, Health Network, uh, all the information is there. 24-7, uh, Channel 13 uh, and 513, uh, Comcast 190 every day. We've been here for 20-some years, um, 7 to 11 p.m. And, of course, the Wilkes-Barre system, uh, Saturdays and Sundays from 7 to 11. We'll see you next time.